Welcome to Jet Age Museum. I'm standing here beside a replica of the E-2839, which was the first jet-powered aeroplane to fly in this country. But the museum's more than just about jets, we're about everything to do with aviation history in Gloucestershire. Well, now you're looking at a replica of the Gloucester Gamecock, a 1920s uh, Royal Air Force fighter. Um, it's a replica that was constructed by Jet Age Museum volunteers over a 20-year period. Moving on now, you can see the frame of a Gloucester Gladiator that was rescued from a crash site in Norway, where it crashed in combat in 1940. And beyond that, you have a replica of the Hurricane. That particular replica actually starred in the Battle of Britain film of 1969. Moving on a bit further, you can see our open cockpits through the glass windows. That's the Trident airliner on the left and the Vulcan bomber on the right. Time tours to get access to those if you come to the museum when we're open. And in front, you can see the kids' biplanes for the youngsters. And behind, a Hawker Hunter Mark IV cockpit, which is for children of all ages. We're now looking at a Meteor Night Fighter Mark 13. Um, this aircraft was actually built by Armstrong Whitworth rather than Gloucester's, but it's a good representation of the Meteor Fighters that were principally made at Brockworth uh, down near Gloucester. Moving on in the distance, can you see the scooter? Now that is a 1920s Unibus that was built by the Gloucester Aircraft Company when they were short of aircraft work. Actually, we believe it's the first scooter ever to be built in the world. Uh, the Italians did not invent the scooter, it was an aircraft engineer from Gloucester. And now we're looking at the Gloucester Javelin fighter, the last fighter aircraft built by the Gloucester Aircraft Company here at Brockworth um, and it served in the Royal Air Force in the 1950s. The first all-weather fighter operated by the Royal Air Force with radar in the front and missiles in place of guns for combat. And here we, you're seeing the ticket desk. If you want to visit the Trident or the Vulcan you get your time tickets from here at the front of the hangar by the glass doors. Now you're looking at another Gloucester Meteor night fighter. This was the latest version with a bubble canopy. That aeroplane's about to go in for deep restoration uh, and as you can see it's got bits holding up the wings at the moment. So one day that'll be in the workshop uh, and it'll come out looking pristine in the future. Next to it you've got a, another Gloucester Meteor but that's the T7 trainer version and we'll have the wings back on that at some point. Moving on, there's a Harrier cockpit waiting restoration. And to the right of that, we've got our BAE Trident airliner. Now that is important to us because Smith's Industries up at Bishop's Cleeve invented the first commercial operation of a blind landing system. and we talk about that with tours in the cockpit. Welcome to our Trident airliner. Visitor tours, 20 minutes, 10 minutes spent in the rear cabin here and 10 minutes in the cockpit.
This is our picnic area right next to the airport. You can look out over the runway and see the aeroplanes coming and going. Here we are standing beside our Vulcan bomber cockpit. Uh, this is open to the public at weekends, 15 minute tour for five people and a chance to sit in the pilot seats and the navigator seats. And here we have uh, in the glass case a piece of the original runway from the Gloucester Aircraft Factory Airfield at Brockworth. And now we're looking at the uh, display about the Luftwaffe over Gloucestershire in 1940-41. Uh, what you can see there is a German bomb that was dropped on one of the cinemas near Cheltenham and thankfully failed to explode. Now we're in our workshop where the team are working on the cockpit of a Hawker Typhoon fighter bomber from World War II. The Typhoons were built by Gloucester Aircraft Company at Bromworth. There's no public access to this space normally, but you will be able to see the cockpit through the glass windows that lead into look into the workshop. And here we're in our time tunnel with display cases, going back to the early days of aviation in the county, the birth of the Gloucestershire Aircraft Company, sea racing planes from the Schneider Trophy era, and the photography of Russell Adams. And now we're looking at memorabilia about the Gloucester Gladiator fighter. And more about the people who designed and flew the Gloucester E28 that took Sir Frank Whittle's jet engine on its first flight. <laughs> 